What is up, Discovery Student Ministries? Welcome back to another Wednesday. We're so excited to be with you again. Um, dude, it was cold the last it couple was days. So cold. Yeah. Polar vortex came through. You guys got to skip out on a day of school. So actually two because you have the holiday you Monday. Have a day off. So here's here's your hypothetical what if scenario. Yeah. Had there not been a holiday that day, would they have canceled school since they did it Tuesday? I think so, I because think it was cold and snowy. We could say yes. Yeah, yeah it was snowing yeah, all day. Yeah. They probably Speaking would. of winter, it's game time. What? <laughs> Our game today is called Weird Words Winter Edition. So, Burr. yeah, I know. Ooh, I like that. <laughs> so we have to try and guess which definition is correct for each weird word. Now they put a disclaimer here. All of the words are actually real. Okay. Um, I like definitional stuff. Yeah, I think, like, just if we were to have to, like, bet. We don't bet. Bet it. No. Bet. Bet. That's bet, bro. Say. So yeah. if we were to, like, take a guess as to who would win this from the start, I would guess you because I think, like, you do a better job of breaking down words okay. and knowing some definitions. Um, we'll see. And so we're, we'll find out. We'll find we'll out. We'll find but out. All right. Let's do this. I think just on the surface. Yeah. Okay. You stand to do better at this game than I do. It's about time. All right. We'll okay. find out. Oh. See, what? That's not even a word. Murkavi. They say these are real words, but they made them all up. Uh, Murkavi, Murkavi, the hibernating bird from Russia, <laughs> the one who goes oh, south, south the for Murkavi. the winter, like a hibernating bird, or a heavy snowfall. Like, are these words in English? Murkavi. It said they're real words, but are they even... Murkavi, Murkavi, all right. So we're holding up the number? Yeah, we're going to hold up the number of right. what we think it is. So you guys playing along with us in your groups or at home. Hold up the number. Don't shout out your answers because you might sway other people. Now, I know some of you, I'm looking at you in my group. Uh, you're probably like, Haha, I'm going to shout out what I know is the wrong answer to try and sway others. Don't do that. Don't do that. Right. Just try and win fair and square. Let people come to their own conclusions. Are you ready? I was born ready. Oh, my. Just kidding. Yeah, hey, I'm ready. All right. Three, two, one. Oh, we went different. We said ways. one. I, I said know. three. Oh, look at you! Let's go because more heavy snowfall, <laughs> more snowfall, means more more, more coffee. I mean, more is like a field. That was the Moors of Scotland. Oh, it see, like a Scottish word. I don't even know. I All wish right. it would tell us like where it came from, but that's good. Okay. Here's the next one. Uh, oh yeah, mark. yeah. It, wait, is this like the Sitz probe? Do you know what that is? No. In theater? So sits probe is like your first, you have the um, orchestra, the pit there, and you just sit down and read it, uh, like read through the production. I don't know if that helps you with this. It doesn't It doesn't. So indentation in the snow left by a fallen skier's rump, as in like booty? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> it's, it's a sits mark. Like where you sat, you made a mark. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. The forward tip of a snow ski. So that's a part that curves upwards slightly at the, the front end. Okay. Or a person who loves cold weather. You're such a sits mark. <laughs> okay. I don't know. I this don't either. Tough. All right. Good. I'm glad. Yeah. Uh, I these are weird words. All right. Um, Sits. Mark. Ah. <laughs> Got my logic. I'm ready. Oh, don't be such a sits <laughs> mark. Right. Wow. Three, two, one. You're going three again. Yeah, because Mark is a person. It can be, yeah. <laughs> oh, it's actually that one. See, I thought there's no way that's too obvious. There's no way that they would actually say that, but no, right. they did. You you talked me out of number one by saying it's when you hey, sit down, you're roughly the mark. You're losing with me. Oh, you're so weird. No, I like that. How'd All you right. guys do on that one? Let's see. How about a pibloc pib pib toe? Pib toe. Right, it's a traditional Eskimo coat. Or is it a spiced hot chocolate? That sounds kind of good right now. <laughs> or an angry mood caused by winter. Oh, oh, such a some of you guys, you were pit block dude. Is that the the form of it? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, some of you are spiced hot chocolate. These are very difficult, so I'm just guessing. I'd be too. All right. <laughs> all, right. <laughs> all right. All right. Three, two, one. I'm sticking with my number three every time. <laughs> Darn it! 
<laughs> that doesn't even make sense. All right. Like I oh, said, man, you were I, such a publicist. Here's the thing. Yeah. I think you cheat on these. I don't. You, I'm. You are the only. You Here's have the deal. Unfettered you access know, to these before we start. You know that if you I were to cheat, I would not. Like last week when it was all of Unless the one it's answer. Part of your plan. And, oh, that's a good point. All right. Throw me up. Uh, yes, Subnivian. the Subnivian. Oh, see, this one makes sense to me. It could be any one of those three. It could be any <laughs> one of those. That's why they have. That's the clever writing. So, oh, yeah, all right, I got it, I got it. I'm going to tell you why before I show the answer of what I choose. Yeah. You've actually got some logic to this. Have you listened to my logic for every single other no. one? Yes, I mean, I have. Mark is a person, therefore I went to the one that said person. Yeah. I don't know. You know what you're answering? Yeah. I'm ready. Do they? All right, it doesn't matter. We're going. Ready? Yeah. Three, two, one. I'm sticking with I'm number going three. With three as well. On Here's this why. Nivea yeah. is a type as a water brand. Snow is frozen water. So sub thinking, water okay. things found under the snow. My logic was Indian and A N. It's like what what's that part of? That's um is that an adjective? English majors. Subnivian. Let us know. So if it's found under the snow, it's a description of it. Right. I don't know. That's that's silly. That's that's pretty good logic, actually. I like that a lot. Hey, yes. I finally got one. The question is, which one. one of our logic was actually Maybe accurate? No, it wasn't mine. <laughs> Why? Well, Nivy, Niv. <clears throat> Uh, oh, the brand of water is probably named because of the root word right, that's related to Right, I'm saying that's the adjective right. for order. I like so, it. Is that Latin, Elliot? Is that Latin? She would know. Would she? Maybe. Because she's fluent in Latin now. She's fluent. Congratulations, Elliot. We're proud of you. Latin. Here's the next, the Muffle Mints. Oh, the Muffle Mints. <laughs> mm, Do delicious. you know the Muffle Mint? The Muffle Mint? The Muffle. Oh, see, now I want a cinnamon pastry. Oh. We had some that would, recently. That would go so, so good. good with my coffee. We could go get some. Oh. Yeah, I don't know. All right, here we go. Insulated winter clothing, furry earmuffs, or the cinnamon pastries. All right, I've, I've got an answer. Me too. Three, two, one. I have never not said three. Until I'm confident in a word, I'm going to keep guessing three. Oh, well done, sir. Well done. That's why I thought the muffle mints. It sounded like a... a, 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 a Variety of things you would wear, right? Not just earmuffs, not just right, cinnamon pastry. Right. All right, that's that's that was good. See, I told and you he was gonna logic it and muffle. Well, yeah, you're still up by one, I think. I oh, check the score down below. Hug him a dog. Hug him a dog. <laughs> uh, that's my new favorite word, I think. Well, I guess it depends uh, on the definition. Uh, really See, bad. number three makes sense roasting a wiener <laughs> in a fire. It's hug him a dog. <laughs> All right, so you guys, this summer when we're doing our, our cookouts and stuff. Uh, I'm just gonna say Hagamadog. Whether that's, whether what that's it means. I don't even care. It's Hagamadog. <laughs> Rolling a snowball whoo, whoa, through whoa, a field. Whoa. See um, the answers. You have them. I just saw it. Okay, those aren't the answers. It's the notes Still. for the lesson time, which is Still. coming up. Yeah. Warming in the winter sun. Ah, uh, I gotta go Hagamadog real quick. <laughs> how do you use this in a sentence? I guess we'll I would find like out. to know how this is used in a right. sentence. Can I get country of origin, please? Yeah. Can I have it use it in a sentence? Yeah. Okay. All right, ready? I'm sending it. Three, two, one. <laughs> You're going. The... Yeah! <laughs> All right. You got to hog him a dog. Come on, guys. It snowed yesterday. Let's go hog him a dog. I don't like it. Uh, for. Or for. 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 All right, is it frozen or frosty? Oh, yeah. Like you go to Wendy's and you get a furry. I got a chocolate furry. Yeah. <laughs> furry winter underwear. <laughs> Why is it furry? <laughs> to keep you warm. Or the state of being cold. The state of being cold. Furry winter underwear. Frosty. All right. Y'all, I'm changing. I'm changing. I'm not doing number three. Well, way to spoil it. Yeah. I've done three every time, and I've been wrong more than I've been right. So it's time to make a change. Three, two, one. <laughs> he went three. Oh, my goodness. Oh. We're both wrong. Frozen hey, or frosty? three was closer to it then. Yeah. So next time you go to Wendy's, you can say, can I get a chocolate frore? <laughs> Fra I don't think you can. Ah. Cruel. Or is it cruel? <laughs> 
Now, in English, the E at the end makes the vowel prior to it say its name, so it's going to be cruel. What? I don't say know. my name, say my name. Is it a hot donut? Yes, it is. <laughs> the French cruelet. Uh, is it to de-ice a windshield? Uh, hey, cruel-ay. do not do that with boiling water. You'll shatter your windshield. Yeah, I... I've seen so many videos recently of that, and it's bad. It happened to a co-worker who had just moved here from India... Uh, my last job and didn't really know much about what snow was and he was like oh I, I need to knock all the ice yeah. off my windshield let me throw some boiling water on it <laughs> now if you do want to not have to scrape it what you can do is make a solution of like rubbing alcohol in right. water which changes the melting point of the yep. ice so that it thaws. yep there you go uh, or is it number three crouching by a fire I never crouching saw fire hidden hidden cruel okay hidden cruel um Okay. Uh, do you want to go cruel by the fire? You, uh, that'd be redundant. No, yeah. Let's go cruel. Let's go, yeah. What are you uh, doing? Oh, I'm crueling. I'm going to eat a cruel. Yeah, me too. Oh, yeah. Cinnamon pastry. Cruel. All right, Hot I'm donut. ready. Okay. Three, two, one. I went back to three. Yeah. I almost went with three. Yes. All right. Hot this is so dogs. good. So good. Uh, let's meggle. <laughs> a hole in a glove to trudge through the snow or an Irish song for winter. Well, if you read those backwards. I had to mix it up a little bit, you know? And then the snow came down. And this is my Meggle now. <laughs> I sing a little Meggle for you, a Meggle for me and you. A Meggle in your winter clothes would be a bad thing. No, not necessarily. It might be like where you put your fingers in. Oh, it's that type of glove. What other types of gloves are there? No, no, no. no. Oh, <laughs> you're saying it's the the, the tunnel, in- the, the yeah, finger yeah, yeah. hole. Okay. Yeah. Not like a hole where my finger is exposed. Right. <laughs> Not like a hobo glove. Right. Okay. We need to move on. This is taking way too long. You ready? Yeah. Three, two, one. <laughs> no! Yes. You know I, what? I went with that one because when I before I read yeah. the answers, I said, "Let's go, Megal." And yep. I would say, let's go trudge through the snow. All right. Aquabob. <laughs> is that one of the Aquabats? Is his name Bob? And so he's Aquabob. Yes, I wish. Aquabats is like a parody ska band. Parody because yeah. their songs are kind of like yeah, I don't about they're parody. jokey they're just stuff. Fun. They're goofy. They're fun. They're goofy. They're goofy. Yeah. And they wear spandex. No, but it's a leg- is it a legendary Eskimo superhero? Absolutely. It should be. Or is it a drop of water from an icicle? Or is it a floating piece of Arctic ice? All right, I'm ready. It almost it seems too obvious, so I'm going to... That's why I'm going with it. Okay. Three, two, one. It almost seems too obvious. The floating piece of Arctic yeah. ice. Yeah. Yeah! See, I told you. Too obvious. Why wasn't it a legendary Eskimo superhero? <laughs> because they didn't speak English. And so that wouldn't have made any sense. We might actually... I don't know the score. We're close. one. Okay. But here it is. If I get this right and you miss it, okay... If I get this right and you miss it, I win. If we both get this right, we tie. If I'm currently winning. <laughs> I know, but this is my chance to mobile. Ugh, you are such a mobile, Nathan. A spear used for ice fishing? Ooh, no. You wobbly walk in the snow. <laughs> wobbly walk. Wa- yeah, wa- <laughs> to wrap your head for warmth. Ugh, I gotta I'm going to mobile. I got to mobile my head. Hey, hand me the mobile. Mo- mobble. Mobble? Mobile. It'd be two Bs if it was mobile. Yeah, like it put if like you gobble. put it in there, it'd be like noble. Right. So, there's no reason so it's mobile. Be mobile. Yeah. Okay. I I ready. <laughs> what do I do, guys? Alright, got it. I don't know. Three, two, one! Yes. <laughs> oh, yeah. We both missed it. So wait, what does that mean? Do you win? Well, yeah, I still officially? win. Yeah. Oh. All right. Ugh, that's lame. Good job, guys. Hey, we will be right back. Maybe. Wah, wah, wah.
guys, we are back. That was some fun winter gaming. Yeah, uh, but now we're right. going to get into uh, this week's lesson time. Uh, if you were with us last week, we started the series going through the book of First John, um, written by a man named, believe it or not, Juan. Juan John. No, it was John. <laughs> well, I mean, it's the um, same. He wrote the Gospel of John, friend of Jesus, right? Maybe. I mean, there's some there's some debate, debate yeah. on which John this was. I like to go with the Yohanan, easy assumptions. I think was the yeah Hebrew the way Hebrew. of saying his name. Yep. Good well, job. There's a Hebrew lesson for the day. That's pretty well, exciting. What was the Greek way of saying his name? I wonder. Join Yoko. <laughs> sail away. Sail oh, man. Away. That's a different song. We're in a mood right now. I don't We're know what's happening mood. right now. It's, it's snowy. It's cold. We got to warm ourselves up with humor. I was, I was precious. Yeah. All right. So this John wrote okay. this letter to yes. uh, a bunch of Christians who were probably experiencing some doubts. We kind of talked about that last week. Um, he gave us the reason, Nathan, remind us of why John wrote this letter. Well, if you look at 1 John five thirteen, he says, I write these things to you who believe in the name of the Son of God, that you may know that you have eternal life. Right. And do you guys remember we talked about that word no last week a little bit because it's it's a little bit of a weird Yeah. Do word. you remember? I, we didn't talk about this then. What what, what the Greek word was, though? Because you kind of talked about the... Yeah, I actually had it in it. my notes for last yeah, week. but not this week. I'm but gonna, I didn't put it, it re-put it in my notes for this while week. While you're looking up that word, um, basically, it's this idea again of like realizing something. Right, the same way we had Waldo up on the screen last week. Um, the facts didn't change. Waldo is always in that spot, but now I realize it. I know it to be true. I know what was already true as actually true. I know that's kind of a lot of weird words, but basically all that to say, like John wants us to see in our field of vision the truth that we have eternal life no matter what else is going on, right? And so that's why he writes this letter, First John. Um Last week, we talked about this contrast between light and darkness. Um, God is light. In him, there's no darkness. Sometimes we walk in the darkness. So we kind of talked about in our groups a little bit um, of what that means, what that looks like. And here's the deal. Like, even if I see the smallest amount of darkness in my life, I need some help, right? Like, I have a problem. Um, if you look at it, like, in the world's way, um, when you get in trouble, specifically like big trouble, governmentally speaking, what do you typically like need to help you? If you get in big trouble, governmentally speaking. Yeah. So like a lawyer. I, a lawyer. Yeah. You need a lawyer, right? So like you need the... some major help. Call for a lawyer. <laughs> uh, is that like phoning a friend? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Did you, you look up one, the Greek one. word? I'm, I'm looking. You're still trying to find I'm still it. I'm trying to find it. Um, I'm almost there. I feel like we're so far past we're that so now. We're so far past it, but now I'm just like, now you're curious. It's curious? Yeah. You know what they say about curiosity. Yeah. Here's the deal, you guys. Anytime that we're like doing these lessons, anytime you're reading the Bible, it's okay to like stop and be like, hey, I wonder what this means and actually go searching for answers. You don't have to have all the answers for yourself right away. It's okay to utilize resources. Nathan's got his phone. He's pulling up the internet to find out what this Greek word is. I don't know how to pronounce Greek. Iado, Ido. E-I-D-O is the word. Okay. Iodo. And we get like, e oh, isn't there, there's a word that comes from like eodectic that has to do with learning. See, this goes back to the game. I told you, he like knew, I, he yeah, knows things about words. words. But not any that help me with <laughs> That's snow. That's so funny. <laughs> to properly to see with physical eyes as it naturally bridges to the metaphorical sense, perceiving, Ooh. mentally seeing. Yeah. Like, I see what you mean. I see what you're yeah. saying. Seeing that becomes knowing. Is I like a that gateway to grasp spiritual truth from a physical plane. Seeing that becomes knowing you start to realize with real eyes what is yeah. true. Perfect. That's great. Um, lawyers, we were talking about, we were yeah, talking you about said you need lawyers. a lawyer if we get in big trouble. Yes. Um, and so if, if I'm standing in front of a judge and having to like be held accountable to, to make account for what I've done, my darkness specifically, mm -hmm. like I can't really think of a lot of people that I'm going to really want to help me. I see all, do you guys ever watch, like have you ever seen judge commercials or lawyer commercials? I yeah, mean, Frank Azar, Frank Azar. He's our guy. Is he the strong arm? He's the strong arm. Call the strong arm. Call the strong Frank arm. Azar. Like, I don't know if I, I feel like he has one motive and that's to get money. 
A hundred percent. Yeah. And so I don't know if I want him. Well, but here, if you want to get money, theoretically, if he takes your case, it's because he knows that he can get a good payout. Because if you get a good payout, his fees will be very right. good as well. Yeah. And if you're a lawyer watching this, <laughs> I apologize. There's just, there's a stereotype about you guys where I don't really trust all of you. But you know what's weird is a lot a lot of lawyers never even go into like courtrooms or involved in cases. Right. Like you can be a lawyer who all you do is like write contracts and approve yeah. contracts and, and figure that kind of stuff. All right, out. so maybe that's a little little better. I don't know. I if it would be hard to be like a defense attorney. Like right. a public I thought about that. Like somebody where you have to defend somebody who you know committed yeah, a crime. I could not do that. Well, I mean, if you did, you'd have to say, like, look, you're guilty. Let's just plead guilty and try to get the best oh, deal I can for it. All right. You. That's fair. You could do that. You probably wouldn't be a well liked defense attorney. Yeah. Yeah. The government, the like people who prosecutor assign the yeah, the prosecutor side. would be like, I want this guy to be yep. his defense yep. attorney. <laughs> Um, all right. Why do, why are we talking about this? Why in the world would I mention lawyers and defense attorneys? Um, it's actually because, because of the darkness, like in our life, mm. we need a defense attorney. We need a lawyer as it relates to our relationship with God, right? Yeah. If God is like the ultimate judge being yeah. perfectly good creator of all, and he is judge of all then we need, because of the darkness in my life, a lawyer. And so John actually talks about this a little bit. Mm. Um, my remote just locked. So let me reconnect. And there we go. Okay. So we're going to jump back to 1 John chapter 2. My little children, I am writing these things to you that so you may not sin. But if anyone does sin, we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ the righteous. I love that John assigns a title to Jesus. It's like yes. Frank Azar, the strong arm. Yeah. Jesus Christ, the righteous, right? Because the word advocate essentially kind of means defense attorney, right? Yeah. He's, if we've confessed Jesus as Lord, he's the one that is standing before God on our behalf, like pleading for us, advocating for us, right? Yeah. When we're in trouble because of our sin, oh. Jesus is standing before God saying, no, 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 no. He's good. Why? Because of his title. You want know, to know an interesting sub point maybe yeah. to this? I don't know. Um, but when we talk about Satan, what does Satan mean? What is the Satan? The accuser. Mean? Means the accuser. Yeah. He's like the prosecuting attorney. Yep. Here's why this person's terrible. Exactly. And it's like Jesus is our def defense attorney. Yeah. So when, cool. when we mess up, when we make mistakes, yeah, Satan's accusing, but Jesus is right there defending us. He's not condemning us right? He's advocating. So like, I, I picture this as I read it, like this courtroom scene, God is on the judge seat. I'm there like in my darkness and my sin. Jesus is pleading on my behalf while Satan's probably accusing a little bit. And here's the deal. Like Jesus doesn't plead on my behalf because of my goodness, mm -hmm. right? It doesn't say in first John two, one, Matt and his righteousness right? It's Jesus Christ is the righteous one advocating for me. And so it's like his righteousness. And John actually talks about this in the next verse. Yeah. First John two, two, he, that is Jesus mm -hmm. is the propitiation. That's a fun word for our sins and not for ours only, but also for the sins of the whole world. Yeah. Propitiation is a fun word. When you hear that word, Nathan, what comes to mind? Uh, it's a sacrifice that, um, satisfies like wrath. Yeah. Yeah. So your translation might actually say atoning sacrifice, depending yeah. on what version you're using. Um, and so, yeah, it means he's the full payment for our debt. Yeah. Right. So when, when he's standing before God on our behalf, like we know the payment, the penalty, right. For my darkness, Romans tells us that the wages of sin is Death. Death. Yeah, you guys know that one, right? And so John paints this picture of Jesus standing before the judge, before God, not just as like my defense lawyer, mm. but when my debt is assessed and God says the payment is death, Jesus pays it in full for me, right? That's the propitiation or the atoning sacrifice. He paid the price for our sins on the cross, right? Mm. His sacrifice there covers all, all of our wrongs, past, present, and future. Right. And that that's encouraging. 
It's not a license to sin, right? Elsewhere in scripture, it talks a lot about that, right? Right. I don't go on sinning right. so that his grace may increase, right? right? I live for Christ because I recognize the payment he made for me. It's awesome. Right. And so, yeah, that, that advocating for my forgiveness, that advocating for life with him instead of death apart from him is huge. And it's like proof of his love for us. Right. It's, it's a beautiful thing. And so like God, John in his writing wants us to like have this view, right? This vision to see with real eyes, the truth that in him, we have eternal life. I love that. I don't have to feel guilty or ashamed right. for my past. The enemy wants me to feel guilty and ashamed. You mentioned Satan, the accuser, right? Right. He wants me to wallow in self-pity. Right. To say, I'm not worth it. How can God love someone like me? Yeah. But Jesus loves you enough that he sacrificed for you. And he wants you to know that that doesn't matter. Like debt is paid in full. Right. Right. You get that stamp of paid in full on yeah. your Paul, ledger. Paul talks about that. It says, mm -hmm. um, having nailed to the cross our like um, certificate of debt. I yep. think is yeah. how Paul phrases it. And that uh, that's a beautiful picture. Really cool. Right. If you think, and I know middle schoolers, high schoolers, you probably don't necessarily have a lot of debt in your life, but <laughs> if you, you know, ever do unfortunately get into some debt, when you pay that off, there's freedom in that. It's like, yeah. yes, like that burden is gone. And so Jesus is saying the burden has gone. I've already paid it right. off for you. It, you're free. So now I get to hold my head high, knowing that I'm free from that debt, knowing that I'm free from the payment of my sin because Jesus did it for us again. Not awesome. because of how cool I am, how awesome I am, how right. righteous I am. <laughs> it's because of how righteous Jesus is. Right. That's the good news. <laughs> That's the great news, right? So let's embrace that truth. Let's live it with confidence. Mm. Let's share it with other people Yeah. because he paid for them as well. Anyone who has faith in Jesus, their debt is paid in full, mm. right? So we celebrate that freedom. We That's celebrate amazing. that life in Christ, right? So we realize with realize the truth that we have eternal life. In Christ. It's great. That was it, guys. I want you to head into, well, you're already in your groups. I want you guys to now talk a little bit about this. Maybe talk about how you can take this truth and go out into the world with it. Like if we just keep right. this truth here with us in our small groups or on these videos, like we're missing the point. Yep. This is too good not to share. That is true. All right, guys. We will see you next time. See ya.